I'm Rachel Miller and I am 48 years old. Uh, I'm in recovery from alcoholism. I'm seven years sober. I had a stroke two years ago. It's two years this month and um, I'm still struggling with recovering from that and anyone else who is an alcoholic knows that um, you're in recovery for the rest of your life and uh, and what I don't know right now today is from this stroke if uh, the symptoms I'm still experiencing if this is something that I'm going to deal with for the rest of my life. Um, that's Autumn and Boris. And uh, right now I'm just kind of doing my first little recording. So I didn't put the dogs away or anything. So the barking is au natural. Um Anyway, what I wanted to do uh, is start a new project because um, one of the things that I've been dealing with with my stroke is that uh, I can't really use digital devices. So I'm a, a marketing director and uh, that requires me to be on the computer all day, every day. And um, you know how much it, just everyday life, we rely on our phones and our TVs and our laptops and all of these things. And, and so today I'm kind of lost trying to figure out how do I live in the world where everybody has turned to digital um, and not be able to rely on it myself. So um, the more that I record these sessions, um, I'm sure you'll get to know me a little better about um, just what symptoms I'm dealing with and, and all that stuff. And so uh, what I wanted to talk about is at least have, uh, have some topics of discussion um, to share about where I'm at with things and, um, and we'll see what happens. So, um, so today I wanted to talk about the de deceptive nature of comfort and, um, and all the things that we rely on to give us comfort. And, um, it's kind of in line with with what I've been dealing with, with, uh, with my stroke, post-stroke symptoms. So I know that we, we rely really heavily on, um, on our phones to communicate with each other, to Google stuff, to listen to music, um, lately I've been over the past couple of years, really relying on mine for listening to audio books. So, um, when my head gets really bad, uh, and I can't do anything else, I listen to my audio books and whether that means I'm just sitting in my bed or staring off into space or taking a walk or exercising or going to the pool, um, at least it's a way of getting my head to, or my brain to have something to think about. So I'm not thinking about obsessing about things that aren't healthy for me. And, um, and so that leads me to that deceptive nature of comfort and how, um, yeah, uh, we can rely on our phones for comfort. Um, I rely a lot on my work for comfort, for giving me a sense of value and, um, 
And so this, the symptoms from my stroke, I haven't really been able to, um, to work as long and as hard as I like to. And that's really causing me uh, an internal battle that I'm dealing with, which is putting my health first. Uh, when I want to put my growth and my, you know, I want to be great. I want to, I want to add value to, to my job. And, and so what I'm trying to do is, is think of different ways that I can add value and be great and also, um, satisfy that need that I always have to obsess about something. And so um, I thought I would give this a try. Um, I think because uh, I am a recovering alcoholic and because I have had a stroke and uh, I have two kids and I've been married and divorced and um, you know, I've lost folks to the same disease that I have, um, alcoholism. And so I feel like I have a lot of experience and, and, um, and I think that because I was gifted with, uh, the ability to empathize with people that this would be a great project for me to share share my thoughts and share my experiences, my strength and hope with others um, that maybe somebody might find some benefit in it. And it's a way that I can um, use all these devices that we have these days um, and not not worry about hurting my head. So um, I am taking, uh, getting ready to take a break from work for a couple months. And so I've been looking for different things that I can do. So this is one, um, I've been sewing. Um, I grew up with my mom being a sewer. So I did a lot of watching over the years while I was sitting with my mommy. So, um, it's funny how much I observed and and that stuck to me. So I've been just playing around and doing some sewing and I've enjoyed that and that doesn't hurt my head. Um, some other things that I can't really do. Um, I, I guess I should go into what's been going on with my head. What are my stroke symptoms? So um, I, I'm not able to, my, my vision, my eyes, and my brain are not communicating to each other. So um, uh, going to the optometrist, the neuro optometrist, they've, they've diagnosed me with the, the, I guess the inability to converge and diverge and handle how that happens with your eyes. My brain's just not doing it. Um, I sure in one of my future recordings, I'll, I'll tell you the medical, the medical angle on that and the medical terminology, but that's, that's what, what I'm feeling. And so what that causes is, is me not to not be able to handle motion. Um, so I can't, uh, like I said, use devices, scroll on my phone, um, really watch TV, ride my bike, ride in the car, drive the car, um, I just went to the pool yesterday and um and it hurt my head. I think the the all the sun and the shimmering off of the pool and the kids running around. I mean, that's the stuff I love about it and I can't it hurts my head to sit there. So, I'm sure you can hear that I'm the kind of sense of depression that I'm feeling in my voice. And so, um that's one of the reasons why I'm doing this is because um, I'm trying to fight back. I'm trying to do something that that is healthy for me, that is positive, and and I think it is positive for me to to share what I'm feeling. Um, 
so that's so that's what's happening and and uh and i think it's so easy for for us to to try to find comfort in things that that aren't healthy for us and that's that's really where my my alcoholism was born and um and i've been fighting lately uh trying to to work harder because i'm just afraid it's going to go away i'm afraid i'm not going to be able to work anymore because of my head and um you know i've been going to i've tried vision therapy and i'm trying to you know uh, i'm it, the first one wasn't great for me um so i'm trying a new a new vision therapist and a new format and we'll see if if maybe i respond better to to this one that's coming up um in a couple days and and i'm afraid that if it doesn't work that i have to stop working and i i don't know what to do with that um i find a lot of comfort i'm i feel rewarded by having projects and completing them well and exceeding my boss's expectations and being able to um, have leadership hear about how well I'm doing and be rewarded that way. And honestly, in my job, I feel rewarded just having uh, leadership tell me that I did a good job. You know, of course, I love the money, <laughs> and that's one of the reasons why I'm I'm feeling fearful and sad about possibly not being able to work. Is the idea of um, I can't make big bucks if I'm not working, and uh, but I'll figure it out. If there's one thing that I've learned in this program is that. Um, once I've made the decision that uh, that I need to make a change, that I can't live like this, I can't continue to live in pain like I am. Um, once I make that decision, there is a door that that opens, and and that just comes with willingness. And one thing that I've been trying to remember is. Um, is that if I can picture myself on the other side of this trouble, um, I'm more likely to get there. I say to my, to my kids all the time, the only way to it is through it. And I learned that in my program. And so that's where I'm at right now. The only way to it is through it. And, and for the past, I don't know, the past two years, maybe since I had my stroke, I, uh, I just haven't wanted to admit that I'm not the same person anymore, that um, I can't do the things that everybody else can do. I can't do the things that I used to do. And, um, and that makes me really sad. And I've been trying to do them anyway. And, and it hurts. Um, it physically hurts my head to do that and and if i keep doing it anyway it hurts more um and then i get more symptoms i get tired i get nauseous um i have to sleep i have to take a break and it's just not okay i can't keep living like this and and so i'm i'm trying to i'm trying to make a change and Anyone who knows me knows that I don't, if I decide I'm going to make a change, it's, it's going to be life altering. It's going to be big. And, um, and it's taken me a while to make that decision, but here I am, I'm making that decision. And, uh, and I need to stop seeking comfort in, in things that aren't healing what's really wrong. I, you know, what's really wrong is that my head hurts. Um, I'm afraid 
that I'm not going to feel rewarding, rewarded if I, if I stop working. Um, one thing that's been coming to mind also is, is I've been thinking about muscle relaxers. I've been thinking about alcohol. I've been thinking about drugs. I've been thinking about, I can't live like this, uh, to the point where, uh, you know what that means. I mean that in every sense of it. I can't live like this. I need to either change or not live. And, um, and that's not a good place to be, obviously. That's why have I, why have I let myself get to this point? Why, why haven't I just said and admitted to everybody and to myself that it's just not working? You know, I had a stroke at the age of 46 and that sucks. It freaking sucks. And, uh, but it happened and there's nothing I can do about it now. This is, this is me. And, um, you know what I heard, uh, I heard the other day, uh, in a meditation through the calm app, Tamara Leverett, Leverett said, imagine kids on a beach um, building a sandcastle. They've got their shovels and they're building this castle. And then the high tide comes and it washes the castle away. And that there are two types of responses that kids have. One is the kid that starts crying and is just standing in that, you know, empty hole that used to be the castle and is looking out into the water and watching the sand churn in the waves and, and just crying and wishing that they could have their castle back. And, um, and then there's the kid who picks up the shovel and starts building another castle. And my whole life, I have been the kid who stands in the empty space and looks out in the ocean and cries and wishes I could have it back, whatever it was. And, but I know that I can be the one who picks up the shovel and starts building again. And I've done it before. I've done it with, uh, with my disease. And, um, and I'm going to do it again. It doesn't, it's not a decision that happens quickly. Um, but it's a decision that I know that I'm capable of. I know that I, as my brother says, am very resilient. And, um, and so that's where I am now. And, and so now I'm seeking comfort in in things that uh, that aren't harmful, in things that are gonna help me grow, help me heal, help me find joy again. Um, it hasn't been very long since I had joy, so I know it's just right. Uh, right out the door, right out, out that window, it's out there. And I just have to um, figure out how to grab it again. And it's, it's going to be fine. And I think this is a, an awesome way for me to share how I'm feeling and, uh, and how I can heal both as a, as an alcoholic and as a stroke survivor. So this is my introductory episode, and I feel like that went well. We had some dogs barking, barking, but that's okay. I want to be, uh, I want to be real here. So there we have it. And um, thank you. If anybody, anybody out there is listening, thank you for uh, for.
for going on this journey with me. And I'll talk to you again soon. Bye.